What's up guys, today we've got some new info on Cyberpunk 2077. So uh, we are gonna be watching a segment from the most recent Night City Wire, which is kind of like their regular development update they've been doing for the past couple of months. And uh, I figured this one was extra important because it's focusing on the vehicles. And obviously that's not the main focus of this game, but I feel like it's gonna be a big part of it. They're obviously gonna be super cool, super unique, and we're getting a little sneak peek here. So uh, let's check it out. I'm so excited for this game, dude. November is just gonna be crazy, man. It's like, new consoles, new games. It's gonna be the biggest month in gaming ever. In a huge open world like Night City, you need a chill ride to get around fast. And in Cyberpunk 2077, there are tons of cool vehicles to choose from. Get this, four liter engine, six cylinder, goes from zero to 103.2 seconds. You fucking believe that? I really hope there's some cool like racing We've crafted and every car stuff and like that. Bike with amazing attention to detail on the chassis, the body, not to mention the interiors. You can expect everyone not only to look unique, but to deliver a unique driving experience. All right, show me what you got. Don't expect advanced tech or luxurious materials here. Nuh-uh. The economy class. Yeah, it's not the size that counts, I guess. <laughs> Little smart car. This class is mostly utility vehicles and low-end clunkers made for every pocket. Hold on, hold on. It's a wreck. Uh -huh. My damn wreck. Well, definitely no guy or girl, Mac. That police car looked sick. If you need Executive to impress, class. Look to this class alone. I'm putting my ride on the line. Either you match it in cash, or you can forget about the fight. It's a six-wheeled, like, Impala-looking thing. No expense has been spared, no frill ignored. Rolls the Royce interiors deck second. out in all the latest tech while you get to sit back and enjoy the ride. Master the heavy duty <laughs> and practical design, trucks and tanks for when you need power and brute force. Hell of a machine. Biohazard trucks and stuff. My pride and joy. Looks Relief like there's going to be a lot of customization. Unstoppable. These are for tunes who love the smell of exhaust and the roar of street wildlife. Their powerful engines and exchangeable parts make them perfect for two. Oh yeah, dude. Come Tons on! of customization. I want to smell that choo-choo burn! Whether it's street racing, running from the NCPD, or just showing off in the streets, with these high-powered beasts, you will mm. have only respect. I hope cars oh, look yeah, like that in the like future. That. Could be kind of cool. If you need speed and armor, the hypercar class is for you. It means precise bodywork, built-in lidar arrays, and really expensive materials. Imagine you're sitting on Bugatti a Bugatti looking thing here. Probably less than a thousand people in the world can afford the Arendite. Not your typical urban vehicle. That thing looks like the Batmobile. It will take you places you never dreamed you'd go. Oh, and original vehicles are not all you'll find in 2077. We also found room on our roster for some true automotive oh, icons. Floor it, V. What? We're gonna have an old school Porsche in there. Okay. Now that's not all. There is there is more so coming. There's like a dev talk. Us. I think it's fair to say we've come a really long way from Roach and the Witcher. So uh, there's a lot to talk about. Yep, there's a lot to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Well, let's start with the various classes of different cars, because in the video we saw there were things like economy and luxury vehicles. But can you tell us a bit more about their kind of design philosophy? Like what does each kind of class offer when people are driving them around Night City? Absolutely. Uh, depending on uh, the variation of the car that you're uh, either buying or stealing, depending <laughs> on your flavor, uh, yeah, you'll notice that they don't just look different. Uh, but they'll also drive different and feel different. If you're buying or stealing uh, a nice fancy looking sports color version of a car, you'll notice that it drives, you know, faster, sounds a little bit more punchy and sporty than, for example, a junkier version of that same car. You know, it can have solar panels tied to the roof or some other pipes that are hot wiring some other, you know, cyberpunk components in your car. So we're going to have various and, uh, versions well, you know, of the same models. Cheap, it probably drives cheap too. 
It's interesting. So it seems that not only do the cars uh, look good on the outside, but there's an awful lot of detail on the inside as well. Things like the dashboard. So can you tell us more about that? Because I know if you find a Quadra Type 66 in the city, it's going to look totally different from the Quadra Type 66 that the gangs are driving out in the Badlands, both That's cool. outside and inside. Yep, Some are going to be off-road spec, city spec, racing spec. If you were about to steal a very nice spec. high-end car, for example, uh, when you get in, you'll see the dashboard light up nicely. You'll see your dial indicators revving a little bit. But that may not exist for a junk version at all. It may have the dashboard ripped out completely. No matter what your flavor is, you'll you'll find something that suits your needs. <laughs> so what I'm going to be rocking that then? thing. Will there be racing? Because I know people have been asking. Yes, we're absolutely going to have several races in the game. Different locations, if you know you're going to be driving in the Badlands. Maybe bring a Nomad car, because it's just built to driving in the Badlands. But if you know you're going to be racing in Night City, just bring the hottest wheels you've got, because you're going to need all the power you can get. No matter where you're racing, though, you need to bring a gun, because this is Night City and you never know what's going to happen. Excuse me? Okay, so you talk about bringing cars then. Let's talk about like storing and calling cars, because we know people can steal them. But what if somebody's found a car and they absolutely love this particular one? Is there a way for players to kind of build that collection? And then how do they actually, you know, summon them? Well, uh, summoning cars works pretty much the same as you would summon Roach in The Witcher 3. Your transportation may or may not show up on the roof somewhere. Uh, but, you know, we're still working on fixing some bugs here and there. But yeah, if there's a car that you really, really like very much, if you can't wait to own a Quadra or a Type 66, you'll get a message from your fixer and says, hey, I've got a Quadra for sale for you, you want to buy it? All you have to do is drive over, pay the money, and you've got your very own Quadra. Not to mention that every single vehicle that you buy, every single player vehicle, is absolutely unique in every way. It's got a unique interior, unique exterior, paint job. Um, you know, it'll sound different, but it'll also handle different. Nice. So in the video, we did mention there was space for a true automotive icon. Uh, do you want to reveal uh, what that actually is? It's a Porsche. Of course. The, the car in question here is uh, Johnny Silverhand's car. And Johnny Silverhand is, well, he's a big rocker boy and he needs some wheels to match. So we gave him a 911 Porsche from 1977. 77 911. In 2077, Johnny's car is going to be exactly 100 years old. Well, Paul, thank you so much for oh. your time today. Personally, I think I'm going to try and balance being a super cool badass mercenary and driving a Mai Mai. Because I love that little car. I think I could do it, right? I could be cool <laughs> and in a Mai Mai. Definitely. Mai Mai is absolutely cool as long as you stay on the road and not on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my very best. We'll see. So that's pretty cool. It's going to be a lot of customization, a lot of, of different types of vehicles. Even if it's the same make and model, you're going to have a totally different spec'd out vehicle and stuff like that. Um, just a lot of customization and, and variation in there for us. So let's check out the next part. I thought I saw some LFA and some R-rate inspired cars in there, and now we can see. That's kind of what they are modeled after. That's awesome. Behind the scenes. We started with the visuals, and then we wanted to like attach a proper sound to the visuals so that you have like a nice feeling or a nice vibe of uh, the, the complete car. And then uh, we moved on to uh, organizing the whole thing. Early on, uh, we made the decision that we are going to record on the racetracks and then we are going to record cars in movement. We started cooperation with Tomek Czopi, who is like very, very well-known uh, racing driver in Poland. That's really a nice sensation when you're driving with a racing driver and then he pushes the car to the limits. Like, you can feel the, the Gs with the braking and uh, tight cornering and you can feel the car actually like bending the laws of physics. We wanted to record a broad spectrum of cars, so we started with the powerful muscle cars and then we went to a more screaming uh, tuned V6s, inline 6s, and then we went to V10s. We Dude, this to is gonna be awesome. Cars. We of course uh, grabbed some uh, drift cars just to have the more aggressive character in the cars. This would be we such a cool perk of the a job. Sound group or a sound team that would make the placing of the mics process very, very fast because we had the plenty of cars to do in a short time span. We had the team of mechanics from a rally team, and they helped us immensely. 
what they've done, they've allowed us to put the microphones into places that we wouldn't be able to access uh, differently. Putting a mic right into the car, they helped us to locate the places that are best. Usually you place three microphones in the engine bay, three microphones uh, in the exhaust, and two microphones in the car. Cars really? are very, very complex in terms of sound, and uh, it's very difficult to get all the necessary components uh, that you have to have to make it sound believable. But we were trying to look for something that would give us the character of the engine. Dude, LFAs have some of the best engine notes of any vehicle, so. It's gonna be cool to see what they model that after, you know what I mean? We wanted to use normal organic uh, electric engine that you could actually have in the nowadays car. We didn't want the engines to be futuristic, sci-fi-ish sounding. We wanted them much more organic, much more down to earth, something that would that represent the combustion engine. And on top of that, we added small elements like the futuristic horns or like a futuristic UI of a that car. Door. It makes you feel like you are in a car of the future and some car might talk to you, other car might have blips and bobs that will make you feel like you're in a futuristic vehicle. But they have combustion engines, which I feel like is probably not going to be a thing in the real future, you know what I mean? Kind of starting to go away from that, so... Interesting. I like it. It's kind of a mix of new and old. We wanted to be uh, very, very close to what Mike uh, set up in the lore. And uh, early on, we decided to record uh, Johnny's uh, original car, which is the uh, Porsche 911 930 from 1977. We recorded it on dyno in control environment in a, in a chamber. We could put Mike in very different places. Porsche 930 that we recorded is the only car really that will be really sounding like the real car in the real That's world. That's cool. So you're not gonna manipulate that. <laughs> They're even getting the window we sounds. More than 40 vehicles. <laughs> not often do we record so many vehicles for a game that is not really a racing game. Truth being told, this was the hardest part in, uh, in my sound career and I'm very, very proud of uh, what we achieved with the sound team. This was something that we didn't do before. So creating the designs, uh, creating the technology behind the, how the sound behaves, that's the best thing actually I ever did in my sound career. I love that they put so much thought, effort, consideration into the driving, the racing. I, again, it's it's not like the focus of the game, but that's always such a big part of open world games like this. There has been a lot like of talk about cars so far, so let's take a look at another collaboration. This time with Johnny Silverhand. Um, <laughs> I mean Keanu Reeves. <laughs> now I think we're going to talk about motorcycles, and that's it. The travel. Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend himself. Journey. Freedom. No, you know, it's not like... <laughs> deeper. <laughs> deep. <laughs> I'm Gard Hollinger. I'm Keanu Reed. And we're here as uh, representatives of Arch Motorcycle, and we're doing some audio recording for Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. It's kind of cool to see everything that goes into it. You got to think about every time you pull that Arch right trigger. Arch Motorcycle is a this stuff is what's coming into your ears. Motorcycle company. Uh, what's unique about it is that the motorcycles are built on a production platform but each one is designed to be able to be personalized uh, for each customer. Beautiful bikes. I don't know much about bikes, but... When uh, CD Projekt cool. Red approached me about doing Cyberpunk 2077, they also spoke about integrating... They were fans of... Uh, or I guess people who worked at the company were fans of uh, Arch Motorcycle, and so... They broached the idea of creating kind of specialized Cyberpunk 2077 version of the Arch Motorcycle. And I thought that was a very fine idea. We have a motorcycle we've, we've designed and we've been developing called the Method 143. And so that, I think in particular, was, was um, 
a creative inspiration. For this the looks pretty cyberpunk. So sort of use that as a basis and then went further. So Not it has a totally different, crazy looking power plant. We did a little customer work. <laughs> it's good, I like it. <laughs> Today we're uh, capturing sounds, getting some actual sounds of a power plant, drivetrain, and characteristics of the motorcycle, which I'm sure they will, you know, have play with and stuff, but the source will be pure. Imagine just doing that all day long. It has a, sort of a racing engine in it compared to our production motorcycles. It has a, a dual exhaust system and it sounds pretty... <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I could definitely blindfolded tell that that's the method 143-ish sounding motorcycle, yeah. So it's not only all about four wheels, we're also gonna have some two-wheeled action in there, probably some two-wheeled races and stuff. But uh, all in all, just obviously a ton of effort went into the vehicular side of things, and uh, I'm excited. You know, what I think about games like, for Nature example, GTA, the aspect of the game. it's one of my favorite parts I mean, It'll be of it, cool so. like, to be on a bike and hearing that going through the city streets and Hopefully it's really good in this mayhem. So I think that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Very interesting stuff. November 19th. It's coming sooner than you think. Like I said, it's going to be a crazy year. We've got a crazy month ahead. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Can't wait to, uh, to start up this Cyberpunk 2077 series with you guys. And I'm going to see you guys later. Peace out.